Jeff, you say that the rhetoric that has taken place over the last two years since Ferguson and maybe even beyond since Trayvon Martin, you think that it has led up to this moment in Dallas? Absolutely, positively. Why Don. is I mean, that? I, well, because it's, it stirs the exact emotions that, that we saw in that, uh, that sick human being that, that took the office, these five police officers' lives. Uh, listen, if, if Charles is, is sincere uh, in wanting to avoid these deadly confrontations between police and, and young black men, as I am, because those confrontations can just as easily end with a police officer dead, then we ought to talk about the underlying problems that lead to those deadly confrontations instead of uh, all this hate speech against police and all this uh, dishonesty Stop. about what's really happening here. Well, then, le well then let's have, let's have a, question, a conversation <laughs> about that because that is a historical lesson that we should all learn and we can might as well have, start having that conversation tonight. We, we might the, actually the, find wait, a wait, point of agreement second, here, one, one second. I'm, one I'm second. trying to agree with you. I don't agree with you while I'm talking, though. The, <laughs> The ghettos in this country were created by design, by government policy. Concentrated poverty is a, is a condition that is created by policy that this country has created over decades and over centuries. Concentrated poverty is a, is a fertile ground for violence uh, and crime. And then we then have to send uh, police officers into those environments that we created. And then we then when they have the, when we have the friction and they rub up against each other and then something in, uh, invariably tragically goes wrong this is what we get but what we can't do is to is to have kind of an amnesia about history and how we got these, to this place we can't th we can't say that black people just woke up one day and said you know what i would really like to live in the poorest most dangerous parts of the country because that's I, just I, where I, totally I want agree, to be. Charles. Economic Let, segregation is a Go very ahead, real thing. Economic segregation is a very real thing. It's at the root of these deadly confrontations, but law enforcement didn't create that economic segregation. Okay. The politicians who are now attacking law enforcement, like one of our fellow pop panelists, are the ones that, that created that and allow it to continue. Uh, cops are there to make those neighborhoods safer to, to try to make Black Lives Matter, to try to allow these kids to, to see a future where, where uh, many don't. Let Angela respond. I so, believe you were talking so, about Angela. Go ahead. Yeah, so first of all, I don't know what you're talking about. I have not said anything that was hate-filled or anything towards law enforcement. I work for 40-plus members of Congress who have never done such a thing. So I reject that, and I hope that you start telling the truth on air because we have an awesome responsibility to try to address, end some address of this conflict. The issue, Angela, that's so that's did you say whatever? And Angela, just to anyway. Just so let me let me yeah. let me read this because we read we had Donald Trump's statement, we had Hillary Clinton's statement, and we're talking about an entity that is supposedly anti-police. I hope it's not Black Lives Matter because this is what Black Lives Matter said. They said black activists have raised the call for an end to violence, not an escalation of it. Yesterday's attack was the result of the actions of a lone gunman. To assign the actions of one person to an entire movement is dangerous and irresponsible. And to that end, Were I stand you here with them in, in solidarity. Did you see the, I, the way the Black Lives Matter protests, protesters so what conducted I, what themselves? So what I think is very important is for you to understand, just like there are rogue cops who shoot black people for sport, there are rogue protesters. That, 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 there are people the who are That's the most offensive thing I've ever heard on this network. No, well, you know what's most more offensive than that to me is that is you calling an organization yeah, we're mounting, we're mounting that, heads that I on the wall. That's, that's what law Angela, enforcement is about. Angela, do you think about. it's inflammatory to, to say that, that, uh, that police officers shoot black people for sport? No, I don't. I think that is exactly how I feel. And when you look across this country at the data, when you look at why these folks in the streets are angry, we have been saying this for it's years, It's because of that rhetoric. We've been saying... You're the one fomenting the rhetoric. violence that these resulted in cops' Sir, deaths last night. let me night. finish my shame point. On because you. You, shame, shame on you. Shame on you. you. Why don't you be quiet? Why don't you listen? You're so arrogant. Cause, you cause can't even hear. You're listen, saying the same things that led to murders last yeah. night. That's why and, I'm and not And you know what? I'm not going to be... The blood is not on my hands for telling the truth. There have been lynch mobs for decades. There have been killings for decades that we have been told we lied about before there was videotape and audio tape and conveniently during Alton Sterling's cold-hearted murder the other day. Body cameras fell off. 
Don't tell me about how I'm doing. The blood is and, not and on the my video, hands, sir. Good video good. from the convenience store exonerates those cops. Yeah. And what hey, I'm Charles, telling you is that is not true. Charles, you know that's not give true. Give us a final word here.